Hi right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. Now you guys know that we love looking at gadgets in fictional films and breaking down how they work. Now in the past we've done some pretty straightforward pieces of technology like Master Chief's armor from Halo. But recently American Ben suggested that I break down Ant-Man's armor from the MCU, which is a far more complicated piece of technology. Although I initially had some reservations because Ant-Man's suit is just crazy, and I didn't pass physics in high school, but the more I thought about it, the more curious I got, so why not? Let's give it a shot. So the Ant-Man suit was created by Hank Pym. It allowed the wearer to change their size almost infinitely while retaining the same mass, which actually means this scene doesn't really make any sense. If Ant-Man was still the same mass as a grown man, he would hardly be affected by that small amount of water and be able to not only withstand the wave that hits him, but also walk underwater with relative ease. Ant-Man's suit achieved this by decreasing the distance between an object's molecules. This is why Ant-Man can survive being flung through a window when he is in his miniature size. He's been condensed into an extremely dense form. Now, Hank Pym was able to do this by discovering a subatomic particle he named after himself, the Pym Particle. A particle is simply a minuscule piece of matter. An atom, for instance, is a particle. Unlike these more familiar particles we were taught about in school, the Pym particles actually exist outside of Einsteinian space-time. This consists of four dimensions, which are the three dimensions of space that we see around us, including time as the fourth dimension. Now, we have no idea what really exists beyond the space-time continuum, and with our current understanding, any conversation about something beyond it is more of a philosophical or theological discussion. Socrates. Mm. Now what? I don't know. Philosophize with him. Which is kind of a brilliant move because by making Ant-Man's suit work on particles that don't actually exist in our physical dimension, the creators can basically do whatever they want. Pym particles were first found by Hank Pym in the 1960s. As we said before, it can manipulate mass by decreasing or increasing the distance between molecules, increasing the density and strength of an individual. Hank, who was working for S.H.I.E.L.D. at the time, contained these particles into two different suits, which would be used by Hank and his wife, Janet Van Dyne. Their code names would be Ant-Man and the Wasp. Besides changing their size, the pin particles also gave the wearer special abilities and also side effects. For one, the process of changing molecular density in an individual created a massive amount of energy, which could be utilized to provide the wearer a burst of speed and strength. Pin particles could also increase the size and strength of the wearer by adding mass. This, however, put an enormous physical strain on the user. This could be due to the fact that the human body, specifically the circulatory and respiratory system, are designed to only function at a certain size. There were other effects as well. If an individual wasn't wearing an Ant-Man suit when they were exposed by pin particles, they would probably just turn into a pile of protein goo. Also, heavy use of the pin particles, even with the suit, will cause some serious long-term health issues, which makes sense. I'm sure continuously rearranging your molecular form won't always be 100% accurate, and something might reform in the wrong size or become misaligned or something else. And there's nothing more sensitive in the body than the brain and all the neuron connections in it, which is why long-term use of the suit can also cause mental instability, especially if you're using the cross particles developed by Hank's partner, aka the Yellow Jacket. And the point is, this is the type of technology that would never pass FDA screening. Oh, one last thing, if the wearer of the suit continues shrinking to a subatomic size and beyond, they will enter the quantum realm. This is another place that exists outside of space-time, which means a certain genocidal maniac planning to kill 50% of the galaxy might not reach you if you are in the quantum realm. Although I still don't recommend you do this because it's very hard to get back. Now, that's a basic uh, outline of what Ant-Man's armor does and how pin particles work. Obviously, a lot of this is sci-fi magic and pretty difficult to explain from a scientific point of view, but what can we figure out? Well, for one, the pin particle's ability to decrease the distance between atoms is pretty much almost impossible to do with our current understanding of physics. Now, there are two ways you could approach this. An atom is made up of neutrons, protons, and electrons. At the center of it is the nucleus, which is made up of protons and neutrons. Orbiting around the nucleus is the electron. An electron's orbital distance is directly connected to the electromagnetic force between it and the nucleus. This distance is more or less constant and can't really be changed. Or at least that's the old way of looking at physics and how I was taught in school. But now you have quantum mechanics and my brain hurts. Of course, you could apply some external force to push individual atoms closer together, but to condense something the size of a human into an ant would be pretty much impossible and require a crazy amount of force. 
The second way you can do this is by removing atoms, but this of course would remove mass as you're decreasing size, and most likely your body structure would not retain the same form, and you would kind of devolve into a pile of goo. So at least with our current understanding of atoms and molecules, the pin particles wouldn't be able to affect our atomic structure in the way it does in the movie. And even if it could, it'd be incredibly, incredibly dangerous, and there'd be a lot of health risks because there is another uh, particle that has a lot of energy that actually does change how our atoms works and even knocks electrons off, and that's called radiation, specifically X-ray and gamma radiation. When exposed to the massive amounts of X-rays and gamma rays, 99.99999% of the time, this causes cancer and death. 0.00001% of the time, it makes you a mutant superhero like the Hulk. We can also look at this from a biological standpoint. How will our organs and our body's systems function when they're shrunk to that small of a size? Well, let's just say there's a reason why mammals are only a certain size from, let's say, blue whale to mouse. Anything smaller than that and basic things would stop working. For one, Ant-Man's voice would be almost impossible to hear if he were that small. Our voice is created by a complicated system that involves our lungs pumping air into our vocal cords, which then vibrate in a certain way to create different pitches and tones, and then our mouth mouth and tongue articulate those pitches and tones into specific words and sounds. The size of this system right here matters greatly. This is why men who generally are larger than women will have lower sounding voices and lower ranges in their voices when singing when compared to a woman. This is why children have higher pitched voices than adults. This is why a piccolo or a ukulele is higher pitched than a flute or guitar. This is also why if you're a tiny Ant-Man and somehow you're able to recreate the human body at that size, the frequency of your voice would be incredibly high pitch and would have a very low amplitude and basically be impossible to hear without very sensitive and special equipment. This same problem would exist for your eyes. You ever drive at nighttime and get blinded by an oncoming car's headlights? Well, what's happening is the pupils in your eyes are actually contracting and letting in less light. But when the car passes, you are again driving in darkness and your eyes aren't letting enough light in, so it becomes hard to see. Now imagine if you were to shrink to the size of Ant-Man. The opening in your iris would go from a few millimeters to something incredibly small. This would greatly limit the amount of light going into your eyes and the various angles that light can go into your eyes. This would produce diffraction artifacts that would distort the image into a blurry mess. This is why insect eyes are structured completely differently from mammal eyes. Instead of just having one lens, insects usually have hundreds of tiny lenses that point in all different directions. Your hearing would also be significantly affected by the size change, and so would your brain. Think about just how smart something with a brain the size of an ant is. What a bunch of losers. Mindless zombies capitulating to an oppressive system. If you were somehow able to survive the process of being shrunk to something that small, you most likely would be too stupid to figure out how to get back to your normal size. But those are only the peripherals of the problems you'll face. Simply put, the human body and all of its organs and systems, including your circulatory system, is specifically built for being a certain size. This is why insects and other smaller animals have completely different systems and organs in their bodies. Which is why mammals can't really be any smaller than a tiny mouse, because then things like your respiratory system just wouldn't be able to soak up enough oxygen. You would also probably need an exoskeleton and energy shield, like Master Chief, in order to move around. There are, however, some other things that the Ant-Man suit can do that will take into account some of the other hardships we'll face if our body shrinks that small. In the movie of Scott Lang, we're able to shrink to the size of the ant, but still require the same amount of energy and oxygen to function. His lungs wouldn't be able to pull in nearly enough molecules of oxygen, but the Ant-Man suit can actually compress and shrink oxygen molecules. Again, as we discussed, you can't really shrink molecules. But it's kind of cool that they actually thought this far with the suit. So yeah, unlike the Halo suit, we wouldn't even know where to begin when trying to create an Ant-Man suit. The closest thing we really have would be to shrink someone before they're even born at a genetic level with something like CRISPR. And even then, it would be incredibly dangerous, hard to do, and unethical. And we're talking about a 10-20% to 20 decrease in size, nothing as drastic as Ant-Man. But that's not to say that the Ant-Man suit is impossible, it's just impossible with our current understanding of the universe. And that is why I love superhero movies and science fiction, because it allows our creativity to push beyond the boundaries of our science. It creates goals and a destination for our current research and understanding. And while I'm a firm believer in the importance of STEM, I still think we shouldn't be too arrogant to think that we know exactly what's going on, because our understanding of the universe is still very, very limited. Which is why the Ant-Man suit could be possible, just not right now.
Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed our breakdown of the Ant-Man suit and whether it's possible for our current technology right now to recreate it. I know a lot of you guys out there watching this are a lot smarter than me, so I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments section down below. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.